Hey guys, welcome to Channel 2S, your home for Gunpla news and reviews. I'm your host, Second Soundwave. And it's time for some more building with news, this time with the high grade sheet in. So we will have to start tonight's Gunpla news on a bit of a sad note, as unfortunately, the US based retailer Hobbywave has announced that they are going out of business. For those not familiar, Hobby Wave is a US-based online store that sells Gundam model kits as well as the entire line of Mr. Hobby modeling supplies. And on Tuesday night, they announced that they are going out of business. And this really is a disappointment as they had a pretty awesome selection of tools and paint and supplies and stuff like that. I know I got a lot of my stuff from them. Actually, pretty much everything Gunpla related that I've bought in like the last maybe six months or so has been from them. So it's kind of a shame to see them go, but... Fortunately, there are a few other uh, a few other U.S.-based Gunpla retailers that can fill in the gap. And on the bright side, they also do have pretty much their entire selection of stuff semi-heavily marked down. So if you want to get some fairly cheap Gunpla, you can go over uh, go over and check out the link in the description. I'll probably have a link to their site down there. Um, if there isn't a link down there in the description, just uh, just yell at me in the comments and I'll update it. Also on the subject of disappointing Gunpla news, we have completely stock-built images of the high-grade Gundam Tristan, and yeah, there is, uh, there is no questioning that this is, in fact, the high-grade NT1 just retooled. And not only is it a retool of a really outdated kit, even the new stuff they made for it really doesn't look that great. Like, look at that rifle, it's just solid white plastic. And I really don't feel like dwelling on the Tristan for much longer, since I'm really not a fan of this kit at all, so let's talk about something a little cooler. Gundam Water Slides. We're finally getting more official water slides from Bondi. They've announced, I believe, six new sets. A couple IBO sets, a double Zeta set, a new double O set, and I believe there's also a Gundam The Origin set as well. And then there's another Universal Sentry one, and they all look great. There's some really cool markings on this. It looks like the double Zeta one has some water slides for the Bawu, so that's pretty awesome. And just overall, these look like great additions to uh, Bondi's official water slide decal assortment, and it's great to see that they're finally remembering that they do in fact make water slides, and they seem to be bringing them back. So, uh, that's pretty great. Also pretty great is Dragon Momoko's next announced model. Now, normally I don't talk about third-party kits, but I do want to mention this one just because uh, it's the freaking Testament Gundam. And if you don't know what the Testament Gundam is, it's a pretty obscure mobile suit from the Gundam Sea to Stray manga, or actually one of the uh, spin-offs of a stray, so it's way out there and certainly not something we'd ever seen official Bondi Master Grade of. So it's really awesome to see Dragon Momoko tackling this design. And as for the model itself, it just looks freaking awesome. It's got an awesome selection of weapons, the just general design of it looks really cool, and even though it's a third-party model, I'm still probably going to go and grab one anyways because, damn, that thing looks cool. So for some much more official and also much less interesting news, we have a new Premium Bondi Master Grade announcement. Well, it's not that new anymore, but this is basically just me uh, restating what I said in that Lost build log. Basically, we're just getting another Shin Matsunaga Zaku 2, except this time it's got slightly different colors and two round shoulder pads. It's also got that fancy heat hawk that uh, Dozel Zabi Zaku has. So yeah, if you're at all interested in this for some reason, it's coming soon to the Premium Bondi web shop, so go talk to your middleman if you want to pick one up. Also, digging even deeper into the pile of old news that I wasn't uh, able to talk about over the last couple weeks, Master Grade Crossbone 2 uh, Custom. It's actually happening. This is a new Premium Bondi Master Grade. This is not the old X2 Verka we got. This is a new one that has the Kai parts. Of course, this thing looks pretty awesome. I'm especially a fan of that rifle that it has. It looks really cool. I like how it kind of folds up. But of course, this is a Premium Bondi model, so... If you want this, you're going to have to pay quite a bit for it, unfortunately. And also, it's that old crossbone mold, which, from what I've heard, is not that great. I'm probably just going to try and track down the high-grade crossbone X2 Kai and stick with that, since I like the high-grade crossbone mold a lot more than the master grade. And that wraps up tonight's Gunpla News, so let's move on to the build. So to start the torso, we're going to take this little piece here and plug this little poly cap over it. And then we're going to take this piece, and this is going to go here. This is going to go here. They're just going to kind of press together like this. And there's another piece that is then going to go over the other side. They just kind of clip together just like that. Then you take this piece and you attach one of those swing out shoulder poly caps. 
into the holes that are on each side of it and then you take it and you clip it down on top of this just like that it looks and it's not a super secure connection but it looks like there'll be something coming up underneath it to hold everything together so hopefully it'll hold together better than this once it's done luckily it looks like that is the case as we do have these little pieces right here that are just going to kind of clip around the side and they kind of hook underneath the uh, poly cap there that little thing goes here it looks like I have to like push the poly cap out of the way a bit I'm going to try building this side upside down since that little poly cap keeps wanting to fall out. Hopefully this way it'll have gravity working against it so I'll be able to get this together. And now that I have this all together, it was a little hard to get these all into each other, but now that I have it all together, it should be a bit more secure, although these poly caps are still super loose. So in order to armor that torso frame that we've just built, we're going to take these two pieces right here, kind of plug them together and then plug those over the front of the frame just like this and then this piece right here is going to drop down over the back of the frame and it should come together just like this okay I definitely did something wrong with these shoulders oh yeah that's that is much better now this slides right over just as it should and then you can take this piece and kind of plug it over the back and it'll slide right into there and now the shoulders are also in the correct spot and everything is all fine and okay only thing left to do at this point is plug that little neck poly cap down into the top of the torso just like that so it's time to build a head to put onto that neck and that also means we'll be applying the only two stickers that are seen on this model and now we're going to take that piece with the little gold sticker and we're going to stick it down inside his helmet just like that it just pushes right down in here and then this piece slides over the back and then you take the visor and you just kind of drop it down in here although I suppose you could also pull that out and leave it straight across his face if you want to go for the more kind of battle ready sheen look but for now I'm just gonna leave it facing up and I'm just gonna pop it right on to his torso just like that well that was super freaking simple let's build a torso to go with it since we got quite a bit of time to spare so we're going to start by plugging these two pieces together just like this. Then we're going to take these pieces, stick them on some poly caps, and then plug them onto the sides of this piece, and then take this piece and plug it down on top of the waist. Next we're going to take these two pieces, plug them together, and rotate this one around so it's flush with the back. Then we're going to do a similar thing for this skirt armor where we're kind of going to stick this piece through here and there's a little space here where it should lock in yep right up there like that and then this is just going to push down and it should tab right in there and it should look something like that when you're done now we're going to take that frame we built earlier stick this on one side and then stick this on the other okay so I had these two pieces together wrong you're actually supposed to hook it up from the underside and then rotate it down because this is actually the front skirt armor and when you peg this onto here you want to have the big piece on the outside so that you can lift it up and give him a little more hip articulation and now that the waist is done we can just plug it right down into here and the ball joint there is a very snug fit so you shouldn't have to worry about that coming out it's got a nice little nice little bit of sort of pseudo automorph or did I just call this automorph? man it's been a while since I've used that word it's been like 10 years since that movie came out holy crap I feel old but anyways there's a little shifting armor thing right here you move his torso down and the chest part kinda comes out of the way and then when it comes up you can kinda push it back down it's just a little thing but it's kinda cool it does still have those uh... Hyakuri floating pistons though and those really annoy me whenever they show up because they look wrong there's just pistons floating and you have to kinda keep them hidden underneath the armor so that they don't look weird but for the most part you know this is looking pretty cool and I'm actually liking this quite a lot so far. And you know what? I don't feel like stopping yet, so I'm going to build the weapons real quick, because why not? They're all pretty simple. They're just one or two piece things that just kind of clip together like this. So now we have a shield, big handle on the back. This is going to tap into his arm. And this would look very cool with a big Tekadon water slide right here in the front. The rifle is also just two pieces of plastic just slapped together rather unceremoniously. Nothing fancy, just the most basic rifle you can have other than I suppose a single piece rifle like you might see on an old no grade but yeah 
at least it's pretty awesome once you get it together. Uh, it's got this interesting kind of armature thing back here, and it looks pretty cool. Also, it's got the same storage slot that all the weapons for the Roe had, so you can swap weapons back and forth between these two kits. Pretty awesome. Now, finally, for the Partisan, we're going to take these two pieces, and we're going to snap them together. And then we're going to take this, and we're going to put this together. I think it's like this. Yeah, it looks like it's like this. I'm going to build it like this, uh, with the handle collapsed and then extended out. So this just all tabs together and seals up like a like a little Ziploc bag. And then you take the handle, and it extends. And it's got quite a sturdy connection in there, which is nice. Uh, it doesn't look like it's going to be flopping around too much. And I'd also imagine it was probably difficult to remove because there was a giant nub on the side of it. Probably should have cleaned that off first. There we go. Much better. Still kind of stiff, but now it's not jamming up quite as much, which is good. And oh look, there's another one of those backpack connectors. And it looks like that's not just for Roe compatibility because this guy also has a little connector of his own and it looks like you can just slide this right on here, right? It looks like that kind of connector. Yeah. You just clip it on right there like that and he's got his little thing stored in his back or you could pull it off just like this. It's, it is a little stiff but I guess that's a good thing because it can uh, keep stuff from falling off and then you plug his uh, rifle onto there. And it's a little weird because the peg is actually a lot a lot narrower than the slot so you kinda have to get it lined up like right in the middle of the slot but once you get it in there it makes for a pretty solid connection and yeah I'm really happy to see that I always love the level of uh, cross compatibility that some of these IBO kits have especially the later ones okay guys it's getting late and I gotta get this thing edited and uploaded so I'm gonna cut this off right here so I hope you guys enjoyed this video we had a little bit of a uh, little bit of good news a little bit of bad news and we built some gun plus so it was a pretty interesting night overall. If you enjoyed it, as always, don't forget to leave a like right about now. And if you're new to Channel 2S, be sure to subscribe for more cool Gumpla stuff and share this video around. It's a great way to help this channel grow. I'll be back tomorrow to finish building this kit, but until then, I'm your host Second Soundwave, and I'll see you next time.